Welcome back. I'm Kevin, and this is the fifth and final episode in the Home Project Studio treatment series. What I'm going to be covering today is the addition of diffusers to the existing uh, absorbers and base traps that we added in previous episodes. What I want to make sure is that everyone understands what changes we've made and how have each of those additions improved the overall acoustics, the sonic improvements to the studio. So let's get into looking at that. My goal with this project is to ensure this room meets my personal acoustic requirements. Like most musicians, I want to maximize the return on my acoustic investments while minimizing the impact on my financial budget. So let's look at where we are. In episode four, I shared the design for the corner base traps and a hybrid trap diffuser I'm using to address low end issues. I installed them and then reswept the room using REW. Reviewing the data plots, we were able to see the improvements these traps made to my room's RT60, especially the troublesome modes in Zone 2. In this episode, I'll cover the concept of diffusion and discuss the two types of diffusers I'm using in my room. Then I'll install the diffusers, resweep the room using REW, and review the data plots showing the improvements the diffusers made to my room's RT60 and my music clarity also called C80. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's do a quick refresh on how much improvement we've made thus far. How I'm measuring my improvements is I'm measuring the reductions to RT60 for each one-third octave as the indicator of improvement. Check out episode two for a detailed RT60 explanation. So let's start with the empty room. Here is the REW RT60 data plot of that room. I've used the blue line at the top of the graph. Notice the RT60 for many of the third octaves are above 600 milliseconds. Now let's jump to the room with absorbers in it. So here's the REW RT60 data plot showing the installed absorbers. I've used a pink line and it resides in the middle of the graph. Notice many one-third octaves above 200 hertz now average an RT60 between 200 and 300 milliseconds. Now let's jump to the trapped room. Here's the REW RT60 data plot with additions of full corner and the hybrid traps. I've used a dark green line and it resides at the bottom of the graph. Notice many one-third octaves between 60 hertz and 200 hertz now display an RT60 between 100 and 250 milliseconds. That brings us up to date. So today we'll look at a diffused room. Why use diffusers? Diffusers are used to manage or resolve reflective surface issues manifest as echoes or time delay. They are used in conjunction with absorption as they do not absorb sound energy, rather effectively dissipate distinct echoes and repetitive reflections that exist between hard or parallel surfaces. These reflective surfaces, which leave most of the energy to be reflected equal to the angle it arrived at. However, a diffuser disperses the sound energy in many directions while maintaining the sound's timing. This is why they are used to remove coloration and echoes within a control room. In my research, I looked at various quadratic residue diffusers designs. Wow, that's a hard one known as QRD with different well depths. These diffuse the sound energy by reflecting energy back into the room from wells of different depths. However, I decided against using them for two reasons. One, they require more space within the room, and this is a small room. Secondly, they take more time and effort to build. Also, I found folks way smarter than I am questioning whether the quadratic diffuser wells change the timing of the reflected sound. So I kept looking for a design that satisfied three requirements for me. One, highly effective at diffusion. Two, has a low profile or footprint. And three, it's easy to build and replicate. That's how I stumbled upon the work of Tim Perry. He wrote a thesis on an easy to make step diffuser with uniform diffusion and compact geometry. This really piqued my interest in maker sensibilities. His approach of continually increasing the effectiveness and efficiency of a diffuser through design revisions balanced my desire for building a simple diffuser now while being able to upgrade it 
if I want a refined diffusion later on. You can check out his research and designs at the link I've placed below. Now here's Tim's design image of the A1LF model. I was so intrigued by the clean design that I built three of them to place in an array. I used a French cleat to secure them to my back wall. These hybrids are a great design that provides the benefits of an absorber and a barrel diffuser. Higher frequencies strike the polycarbonate convex surface and are diffused back in the room keeping the sound timing, phase, and energy consistent, while the low mid frequencies pass through the polycarbonate and are absorbed by 2 inches of 702 fiberglass. The polydiffuser provides a resonant area that retains low mid energy as it's absorbed. Now with the hybrids and the A1LF diffusers in place, let's sweep the room and see the impact they make at the mixed position. Let's start with the REW chart for the trapped room. All one third octaves still plot between 100 and 300 milliseconds. Looking at the latest diffusers chart, they still plot within the same millisecond range. But let's overlay the two plots. Now it's clear that there are continued improvements to the RT60 in the room specifically in the lows 50 to 100 millisecond change, the mids 10 to 40 milliseconds change, and the highs 10 to 70 milliseconds in change. So I've achieved great results in a small bedroom without modifying any room structure. The blue line compared to the purple line shows the true RT60 improvements. In zone 2, 230 to 510 milliseconds decrease. In zone 3, 310 to 580 millisecond decrease. And in zone 4, 320 to 560 millisecond reductions. So now let's look at clarity or C80 for the room. Music clarity or C80 is produced when a room has a high ratio of early sound energy to later reverberant energy. What I want for my room is to have a high percentage of the direct energy in relation to the indirect arriving at the mixed position. The calculation divides the timing of the energy measured at 80 milliseconds. In this chart, we've plotted the C80 for the empty, trapped, and fully treated room. Higher on the chart is better clarity. So that brings us to the end of the Home Project Studio treatment series. I've really enjoyed this journey and I hope that some of you have been able to follow along and learn some new things for your own project studios. If there's been any questions about the topics that I've raised or things that I've said, please feel free to ask questions or give your opinion in the comments below. So until next time, thanks for watching. I want to make sure that you can actually hear this room untreated before we move on to actually treating it both with absorption and then eventually with some diffusion. So now we've treated the room. I'm hoping you can hear the difference. What we're hearing now is we're hearing a more boomy, a little bit more low end. That comes naturally as you begin to treat the room. So now you're hearing the room completely treated with absorption bass traps, and diffusers. You can hear the clarity of my voice, the mic's in the center of the room now. Quite a difference from where we started with an empty room to where we are today.